So let's continue our discussion on hydrohalogenation reactions and let's look at the following reaction in which we have an asymmetrical alkene that has a bromine attached to one of the carbons in the double bond and we add an HBr molecule. Now because this is an asymmetrical alkene that means in the first step we will produce two possibilities of carbocations. So the first reaction looks as follows. In the first step we have the pair of electrons in the double bond takes this H atom and our H atom becomes attached to this carbon. And that means we form the following carbocation. So in this carbocation we have a resident stabilization. In other words, our full positive charge is actually delocalized from this carbon onto this bromine because this bromine has a pair of electrons that can interact with this open 2p orbital of the carbon forming the following two resonant stabilized forms. Now in the second type of reaction our H atom can go onto this side versus this carbon so now we form the following carbocation intermediate that has a local charge, a full local charge on this carbon. The charge is no longer delocalized, it exists strictly on this carbon atom. So this reaction will not take place because this carbocation is relatively unstable compared to this more stabilized intermediate. So let's look at a second type of reaction in which we also have the following asymmetrical alkene but now we no longer have a halide attached to our double bond. We simply have an alkene. So let's suppose we add an HBr molecule. Once again because this alkene is asymmetrical that means we're going to have two possible reaction pathways that have two different products and two different intermediate carbocation. So in the first step the double bond, the pair of electrons in the double bond takes away this H atom and now H atom becomes attached to this first carbon. So this first carbon gets the H and this has our positive charge, this carbon, the second carbon. So notice this is a secondary carbocation intermediate. In the second step, our nucleophile creates a bond with this open 2p orbital forming the following product. In the second step, or actually in the second type of reaction, now we have the H atom going not onto the second car not onto the first carbon, but instead onto the second carbon. And we form the following primary carbocation intermediate. And in the same way, this acts as a nucleophile using its pair of electrons to capture this primary carbocation, forming the following product. So in the same way that we spoke about stabilization here, we can also speak about stabilizing effects in reaction two. So which one of these reactions will be more likely to take place and why? Well, to answer this question, let's look at the stabilization of the transition state as well as our intermediates and products. So notice that we have a secondary carbocation here and a primary carbocation here. Recall that tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary, which are more stable than primary, which are more stable than methyl carbocations. That means this intermediate will be more stable than this intermediate because we have a secondary carbocation. So this will be lower in energy than this one. Also notice our first step is an endothermic step. And that means, according to Hammond's postulate, the structure of our transition state that exists between the reactants and this carbocation will resemble that of our intermediate. And so, not only will this be stabilized, but our transition state will also be stabilized. So, the transition states of this reaction will be lower than that of this reaction. So, if we label our diagram energy versus reaction progress, we see that the blue curve, which is reaction A, given by this A here, has lower transition states as well as the intermediate end product stabilities of our molecules. 
So that's exactly why reaction A will be more favored than reaction B. Once again, in reaction A, in this reaction, the transition state and intermediate carbocation is stabilized by a secondary structure more than the primary structure in reaction B. Thus, the creation of the more substituted halide, this is the more substituted halide, will be favored. And this is known as Markovnikov's rule. So Markovnikov's rule states that the more substituted halide will be formed. Now, why exactly is the more substituted halide favored? Why is it that tertiary carbocations are more stabilized than secondary, which are in turn more stabilized than primary, which are in turn more stabilized than methyl? Well, there's a concept known as hyperconjugation that creates this more stabilizing effect that we will discuss in the next lecture.